one of the reasons we thought about studying this is wildfire fine particulate matter or PM 2.5 is no longer confined to the West Coast of the United States. Wildfire PM 2.5 is increasingly contributing to poor air quality across the U.S. And there's this growing body of evidence that total PM 2.5 is related to incident dementia. But we were interested particularly in wildfire smoke as this growing climate-driven exposure. And so in this work, we're exploring whether three-year average, so long-term exposure to wildfire PM 2.5 is related to incident dementia. We're looking in a cohort of 1.2 million older adult members of Kaiser Permanente in Southern California using their electronic health record data from 2008 to 2019. Um, from the EHR, we are identifying dementia using diagnostic codes, and we're also extracting potential important confounding variables like age, sex, race and ethnicity, marital status, smoking status, and the level of poverty in the communities where the patients are living. Using this really rich data source, which is the electronic health record, we were able to estimate the association between exposure to fine particulate matter from wildfires and from non-wildfire sources, adjusting for the covariates that Dr. Casey described. Um, and what we saw was that for every one unit increase in the concentration of wildfire PM 2.5 over that three-year average window, there was a roughly 20% increase in the odds of a new dementia diagnosis. And then for non-wildfire particulate matter, for every three unit increase in the concentration over a three year period, we saw a 3% increase in the odds of a new dementia diagnosis. So the way that I would summarize that is that exposure to both wildfire and non-wildfire particulate matter was associated with subsequent dementia diagnosis, but the association was quite a bit stronger for PM 2.5 produced by wildfires. From the population health perspective, which is where I'm coming from, the biggest thing will be to slow climate change and stop burning fossil fuels and figure out how we're going to better manage wildlands so we have reduced wildfire exposures to begin with. Uh, of course, that's quite complicated and there are downstream things that absolutely patients may wish to do by working with their providers. So the there was a 2020 Lancet Commission on Dementia Prevention, which cites air pollution as a potentially modifiable risk factor for dementia. So this relationship is recognized, but I think continuing to raise awareness that air pollution in general and wildfire smoke exposure in particular may be important risk factors for um, subsequent dementia is something that we hope that our work sort of draws attention to. I think that individual patients and their providers who want to take immediate steps to mitigate this potential risk factor could think about wearing an N95 mask outside on days when air quality is poor or choosing to remain indoors whenever possible. And the air quality index is a number that's pretty easily accessible. If you have a weather app on your smartphone, for example, usually the air quality index is depicted there. And 100 is thought to be the threshold that really indicates dangerous air quality. So if you look at your weather app and you see that the AQI, the air quality index, is approaching 100, you might choose to spend more time indoors that day, close your windows, and if you do have to go outside, wear an N95 mask. I also think that there is, there is sort of a health systems level component to this, where if we recognize as not only you know individual providers and patients, but also but also as a health system, that there may be increased burden of disease associated with these wildfire events that may help us to sort of ensure that there are adequate resources available for patients and providers as we move towards a future where perhaps these events become more common. I'd say two additional things. One, I do want to put in a plug for indoor air filtration which has been shown to dramatically improve indoor air quality. So looking for a HEPA air filter, if possible, and uh, even getting assistance building a box fan filter, which can cost less than $100 and can really clean indoor air. Could be something for folks to consider. Regarding this relationship between wildfire particulate matter and incident dementia, 
we were limited here by the duration of electronic health record data we had access to, as well as the exposure, the daily wildfire PM data we were working with. And so we looked at a three year average, but we know the duration of onset for dementia is likely much longer. And so moving forward, it would be nice to look over a longer time period, especially as people entering older age now have been exposed to wildfires quite extensively through potentially their 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, that might be really important. So we'd like to dig in further and try to understand that, that window of exposure that might matter most. And, and to add to that, I think there are a couple of other sort of exciting future directions. One is that, you know, reproducibility is the cornerstone of good science. So I think it will be important, important to see similar research conducted in other study populations and geographic contexts to see how consistent the finding of an association between wildfire PM 2.5 and ex exposure and dementia is. I think that um, work that really interrogates the mechanism that underlies this association will be of great interest. And then I'm really curious to see whether or not we see a similar association with other neurodegenerative processes like Parkinson's disease or ALS. Um, so I, I hope, you know, to the scientific community at AAIC, this becomes, you know, clear as a very interesting and exciting area where lots of good scientific minds are needed in the future.